Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to talk to you today about a new update to the Auto FPS program. I'm not going to go through everything about the program. I'm just going to go through the program basics and then what's been updated. And I'll put links in the description. I've done a couple of videos now pretty in-depth on the program and what it does. Real quickly to go over it, for those of you who are not familiar, and pardon the kind of the poor visuals here. I've had to scale up my desktop to be able to show you a good, uh, good clear picture of this. At the top, we've got the connection status. So you, number one, you always want to start this program before you start Microsoft Flight Simulator. The other thing is, is you don't want to use the auto start option. There's an auto start option when you install the program. You don't want to use that. You want to start the program manually. There's auto start options, I believe, with FSU IPC or with the SIM. So it'll start whenever you start either of those two programs. But you want to you want to start it manually and you want to start it before you start the SIM. Now there's this connection status section here at the top and MSFS, SIM Connect, and Session. So these three turn green when you launch MSFS and it starts. SIM Connect will turn green when you connect successfully to the SIM. And session is simply a flight. So when you load a flight in the sim and auto FPS is working, then that will turn green. Now these are the sim values. There's your FPS value and it will register your frame gen FPS. So if you've got the frame gen mod running or if you're using native frame gen on, a, on an RTX 40 series card, it will register what FPS you're getting with the frame gen, which is fantastic. These are your current TLOD and OLOD values. This is your height above ground level. This is your current feet per minute climb or descent. And this is what your cloud setting is in the sim, either you know ultra, high, medium, low, etc. Here in the general section, if you click the on top box, it will always keep the auto FPS app running on top of your Microsoft Flight Simulator window. If you want to be able to, you know, watch the values as, as you're using the sim or as you're changing scenarios, etc. Now this use expert options box will normally be unchecked when you load the program for the first time and you can set a target FPS. Now it will automatically detect the program. The app will automatically detect if you're using PC, VR, or frame gen. You can set a target FPS independently for all three of those. So you can have, if you're somebody who flies sometimes in VR and sometimes you fly in just, you know, what do they call it? Pancake mode, <laughs> 2D pancake mode on a monitor. You can set a target FPS for your monitor mode. You can set a target FPS for VR and you can also set an independent one for frame gen. If sometimes you use frame gen, sometimes you don't. It needs to be achievable. It needs to be something that your system can regularly and easily attain. If you set too high of a target FPS value, you're going to cause problems for your sim. One great option, this here is called auto target FPS. If you select that, you see this box turns to auto. And what it does, the, the app will, during the first 20 seconds of a flight, it will automatically... It's, it's going to monitor what your FPS value is, and then it's going to determine based on what your FPS value is during that period of time and set automatically an appropriate FPS target for you, for whichever mode you're using. Fantastic tool. Uh, flight type, this is VFR, IFR, and generally speaking, what this means is generally aviation aircraft would be VFR, even if you're flying a, an IFR flight you're going to be lower to the ground, you know, and, and your TLOD might be uh, different or the, the desired TLOD you might want for a low level flight VFR type GAA flight is going to be different from an airliner flight. And these two selections will automatically preset different variables that are generally going to be appropriate for most people that are using the app. So if you want to be really, really simple about this, launch the app, set auto, FP, auto target FPS, and then pick either GA or airliner, 
and and go and you're good to go now if you want to get more in depth it's got the expert options and you check that box and there are three different methods of auto selecting your TLOD it's either FPS sensitivity FPS tolerance which is a percentage value FPS sensitivity is a frames per second variable off of your target FPS FPS tolerance is a percentage off of your target FPS and auto TLOD will change the TLOD value in steps based on what you've got set for your TLOD at base, which is your TLOD on the ground, or wherever you set it, in this particular case 2,000 feet, or your TLOD at the top, and your top altitude. So you can set a base altitude, and you can set a top altitude. So in other words, in this particular case, between 0 and 2,000 feet above, whoopsie, that's another feature I was going to tell you about in a second. In this particular case, between the ground and 2,000 feet AGL above ground level, your TLOD will be locked at 50. And generally speaking, you don't need a lot of, you don't need a very high TLOD when you're low down to the ground. The TLOD is a radius of scenery that you can see out from the airplane. It's not density, it's a radius. So in other words, if you've got 50, it's, it's going to have a very small radius. If you set it to 400, it's going to have a very big radius. You're going to be able to see the scenery in detail at a, distance, a further distance from where you are. And when you're low down to the ground, obviously you don't need a large radius of scenery because you're low down to the ground. You can't see things far off in the distance. And in particular, when you're at an airport, because you're usually surrounded by buildings, trees, etc., and you're not going to be able to see far out in the distance anyway. And so by having a high TLOD at a low altitude, all you're doing is rendering scenery that you can't really see. And it's not going to make a big difference to your sim experience. And then you can set a top altitude for above whatever altitude you want to set. Your TLOD will be this value. So let's say you're doing you know, an airliner flight. You might want to set it to, I don't know, five, seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 feet, and then set it to whatever TLOD value that your system can handle very well. And then once you exceed that altitude above ground level, your TLOD is going to be this value. If you're having trouble achieving that value, the, the target TLOD that you have set or the target frame rate that you have set, the program is going to automatically decrease your TLOD, your terrain level of detail, to try to get your system enough performance headroom to be able to get your target FPS, to be able to hit your target FPS. If it goes down to the lowest TLOD that you have set, in this particular case 50, let's say your system is struggling to produce good FPS, and it lowers your TLOD automatically down to 50, which is your lowest value, and you still can't get good performance, you still can't get your target FPS consistently, if you have the decreased cloud quality box checked, what the app is then going to do, it's going to decrease your cloud quality from, let's say, ultra to high, from high to medium, etc., because that's the next kind of most impactful setting that affects FPS a lot. And this is one of the new features in this update, which is a GPU load based cloud recovery system. And this is absolutely genius. So it's not only going to measure performance in terms of FPS, but when, you're, when your GPU is under heavy load, it will then decrease cloud quality to give your GPU some relief. Okay, and we'll go into that in just a second. And the auto LOD function is this one down here. It, it works similarly to the auto TLOD up here, but it simply affects your object level of detail rather than your terrain level of detail. OLOD in general is not as important to performance as TLOD. So that's why it's that's not really the most important one to be uh, to be changing. Now another feature that I was going to show you real quick that I accidentally used was if you want if you double click in an area of the app which is not a control like in other words you don't you're not control you're not double clicking the on top box it will progressively hide 
the different sections of the app. So getting back to real quickly what the app does, the, the biggest change in this particular update is that the cloud quality decrease option for when either your target FPS can't be achieved at the lowest TLOD, which is what we talked about, or when the GPU, GPU load is too high. And that is a tremendous change. So, you're, so it's going to be monitoring your GPU load. I already talked about if you want to be as simple as possible, if you just want to open this app and, and just use it, turn off the expert options, select your flight type, click our auto target FPS, and you're good to go. So the big changes in this version, version 0.4, 0.2.16 is the new decreased cloud quality option based on GPU load. Now this is independent of your terrain level of detail. So your, your cloud quality can now be changed <laughs> independent of your TLOD. The decreased cloud option has a user definable cloud reduction and recovery GPU load. So in other words, if you've got um, the decreased cloud quality set, when your GPU load goes above 95% it's going to decrease your cloud quality in this case and it's going to recover your cloud quality back to whatever your setting was once it goes back down below 80% of use which is really cool so in order to do this you have to have the GPU Z companion app running that's the GPU Z performance app I'll put a link in the description so you guys can find that you can start the GPU Z app at any time when you're using Auto FPS. You don't have to start it before Auto FPS. And the GPU load reading for Auto FPS, in other words, when it's what value it's reading, is averaged over five seconds. So if you have like a, a split second spike in your GPU use, it's not going to cause the app to either decrease or recover your cloud quality setting. It's only over a five second average. If you have GPU load selected, which is this here, then you would have, see, when you, when you use FPS sensitivity, the activation method for the decreased cloud quality is TLOD. So you would set a recovery TLOD. So once your TLOD gets above this value, it will recover your cloud uh, setting back to what you had it. FPS tolerance is, is the same. It's the auto LOD, auto TLOD, option where you can decrease cloud quality based on your GPU load and you can you can set the different step sizes the LOD steps if you want larger or smaller changes to your TLOD as you get closer to your base or your top altitudes yeah that's that's pretty much it in terms of changes all right let's take a look at updating the app you've got your little dog icon here auto FPS double click and it opens and what it's going to show you is that new app version 04216 now available here you click on that and you come here simply download the installer save that open this And the one thing you want to remember is use do not configure auto start. That's, that's the important one to remember with this. And you want to create a link on the desktop. You may or may not already have one. Um, you probably do. Or in this uh, option here, you can remove the app if you want to. So I'm going to click on update. And it's going to ask me to close the app. So I'll do that. Then we'll click up, update. And you'll see it's going to download anything you need. It's going to check to make sure that you have the MobiFlight module, which you need in your community folder. And it's going to do the rest of its business here. And there you go, finished successfully. As I said, I've made a couple videos now on how to do this. So it's, it's, it's not worth me going through the entire thing all over again. I'll refer to those videos in the description of the video below. I'll put the links. 
If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments section. The developer of the app is unavailable for the next couple of weeks uh, on vacation, on a well-deserved vacation. However, there is an extensive readme section on GitHub that he's written that's going to answer a lot of the questions that you guys have. So if you have issues, if you have questions with the app, I'll put a link in the description to to the GitHub location, obviously, if, you, if you've never used the app before and you want to download it for the first time. But that will also take you to the readme file so you can see all of the readme information. And just the last thing I'll mention before we go here is if you're using this app and you're getting stutters, freezes, or crashes the desktop, and you're not getting those when you aren't using the app. So presumably in that case, the app is the cause. The most common reason that this happens is because people set too aggressive an FPS target, which is why I really recommend just using the auto target FPS because we're we're emotional about FPS as flight simmers. It, it might dent your pride if you've got, you know, to, to put 25 or to put 30 or to put 40 or whatever, but you, you need to select a reasonable, achievable target FPS that you can, that you can achieve, that your system can achieve on a regular basis. Otherwise you're asking for performance trouble. So issue that people kind of ask about is why is this, you know, I'm getting stutters with this, with this app. That's why again, any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. And I hope you guys are doing well and have a great day.